Well, I've been served. You know when you go away for a week for Christmas and you come back and you have a nice safety recall issued to your new car. I mean, look, realistically, this, this time, it's actually not that big of a deal, and I'm sure everyone who follows me who also has S550 Mustang has gotten one of these in the mail. So this is a weird one. So it's like not a super big deal, but the reason why it's even a problem in the first place is what has me worried. So it says, what is the issue? And it says, on your vehicle, the brake system warning indicator may not illuminate if the brake fluid is depleted from the brake fluid reservoir. And of course, that may increase the risk of a crash because if you don't realize your brake fluid's low and your brakes potentially malfunction, you get the idea. Apparently, the fix is just a uh, update to the body control module. Yeah, a software update. So that is all it takes to do this. It's not really a big deal. I don't even know if it's really worth even going through the trouble of having it done. My question is, why would your brake fluid level be low in the first place? <laughs> like, that's my question. You know, and the problem is these recalls, these safety recalls are issued by the NHTSA, which you know, they only issue them, or they only basically have the manufacturers issue them if there are enough incidents that probes an investigation, and then the investigation, you know, goes on, they realize that there is a problem. So that there were so many incidences of this happening for them to probe an investigation is kind of concerning. How are so many people having a problem where their brake fluid has been low enough to even trigger the warning light? Like, why is your brake fluid that low? So that's the part of this whole thing that actually is concerning me. The actual recall itself, I don't really care about. But anyway, um, okay, let's go pop the hood. I need to check things out anyway. So, of course, those who don't know, this car has just made a very long and exhausting trip to Maryland for the holidays and back to Florida. 937 miles each way. And then all the driving I have to do up and around Maryland. So yeah, lots of uh, lots of driving recently. Hey, look, the engine's still there. That's that's solid. So this was definitely the test of all tests to make sure things were good. I mean, I wasn't racing the damn thing, but still, it's a lot of mileage, and I didn't have any hiccups with the car, thankfully. I don't see any more oil leakage than I have been seeing dirty um but everything else looks good everything's been running good no crazy issues yeah coolant level hasn't changed that's always good everything looks solid and uh let's see how's our oil look our oil still looks like oil so that's good no milkshakey stuff yeah actually while i'm under here i need to grab i need to grab this because i need to take a measurement for a future project that's gonna be happening very soon and uh, I'm not gonna give details because, you know, kinda wanna keep y'all you on your toes. Those who follow everything closely should know what this possibly could be for. And if you don't, I'm gonna keep you waiting. But this is gonna be a project we're gonna be doing very soon because I feel like it's kind of important. But I have to get the measurements, millimeter, zero out. I gotta get the measurement of the oil cap here, the bottom of it, inside diameter. 29.8, hey, I think that's the size that I need. So that might work. I'm gonna take a few other measurements of this before I put it back in the car, but that actually might work. Other good news, it's been like Christmas. Look at all these car parts. I ended up packing the trunk with everything I could fit. I got, these are all the car parts that were left up in Maryland. Uh, when I left, I have not had the chance to get them until now. So it's been pretty much two years without most of this stuff. And uh, a lot of this is just going to get resold because I have no use for it. Like here is a pickup tube for the Cobra. Well, there's more than just that in there, but that's mainly what that is. Uh, that needs to be sold. I mean, it'll fit any 4.6 high volume pickup tube. I wonder if this is even worth investigating. Here's that uh, Cadillac. ATSV fuel pump that I was trying to modify for the SHO. I wonder if it's still worth seeing if this is even adaptable to that car. That might be a project for another day, but I have that, so that's cool. 
If not, I will sell that because I don't need it. Uh, let's see. This is all leftover timing stuff that I didn't use when I had to fix the timing chain guides on the uh, Cobra DNJ, which is decent uh, brand, but when it comes to timing stuff, you know, probably not the best, depending on what you're using it for. For a mostly stock application, it was probably fine. But yeah, I got cam sprockets, other things. Uh, yeah, so this is all going to be sold. Chains, I don't think it's necessarily bad. I don't know if I would use it in a high performance setting, like something you're really going to dog out and push. But like for a, you know, just replacement on a mostly stock engine, I'm sure these are fine. Uh, one of these came out of uh, the Blue Fox body. So it's a 92. And uh, just by looking at these, it's it would be this one because this is an EEC4. So this came out of the Fox body. So if anyone needs a four cylinder ECU, one's for sale. And uh, this came out of a late nineties Ranger. Cause when I was trying to see if I could switch these two out, which is technically possible, but it wasn't as easy as I thought it was. Um, so this is an OBD2, OBD1, and that came out of a Ranger, four cylinder Ranger. Uh, let's see. Filters, gaskets, I got gaskets for Cobra, oil pan intake. This is for sea heads. I mean, I got all kinds of stuff. I forgot I had filters and I got damn harnesses here from the Fiero that I don't know what to do with. I have hood latch from the Cobra that will fit any Mustang. Oh, this. While I have this, I'm gonna check something real quick. This is an oil cooler adapter that I bought for the Fox body when I was gonna do the two, three turbo build. And when I ordered it, I'm gonna use this one. And when I ordered it, I was under the impression that this was for, you know, the early two, three engines, not modern EcoBoost engines, or even anything after that, though, I guess it's possible they could be the same size um, because let me see here. Wow. Oh, man. Let's see. Oh, I think this is the same size. Let's go on there. Come on. No way. Look, that goes right in there. Holy crap. We have an oil cooler. Now kind of getting a close look at it, it really ain't the best quality. The casting is not super smooth, but I think it would be, I think it'd be all right. And I have everything I need, all the fittings here. So that's something to investigate in future projects. Like I have all these spare parts I didn't realize I have. Also have a 2.3 turbo manifold here for the older 2.3 Fox body. Freaking Cobra intake. Uh, yeah, all this stuff is for sale. I have no use for it. And I don't think I'm going to get a Cobra anytime soon. I don't think I'm going to do a 2-3 turbo build like I wanted to originally anytime soon. And that's another turbo in there for that whole project. So many, like most of these parts are from the Cobra and the 2-3 build that never even got started before it ended. And a factory shifter too for a Fox body auto car. So much stuff. So much overwhelming amounts of stuff I forgot I even had, but some of it is actually usable for the current car and it's cool. So I'm happy to have all of that, but I'm gonna have a lot of this stuff up for sale. I'm just gonna basically be selling it locally on like Marketplace. So if you live in Florida and you happen to see any of these parts for sale from me, um, you know, just be no, I'll. You know, there's going to be some of the best prices on everything. I ain't trying to get an arm and a leg for nothing, but any little money I can get to get rid of this stuff to put it towards parts I need for that car, any little bit will help, you know, and I like helping out other car guys getting good deals and stuff because I'm always looking for good deals. So I like to return the favor. Yeah, if you need any of these parts, let me know. I doubt anyone who follows me actually lives nearby. Oh, well, that's, I'm, I'm thinking too much about it now. I just wanted to make this video to update everyone. It's been a week. I said I wouldn't be really back and doing anything until after Christmas, after this trip. 
and I just wanted to update everyone on the car. The car is doing great. So that makes me really happy and I'm just, it makes me know that at least I did someone a halfway decent job putting the new engine together. So that's cool. And that, yeah, stuff's for sale if you need it. The other stuff is for whatever I find useful. for. And future projects are coming. Gonna have some fun here. I'm a hint in a very experimental project it has to do with exhaust. That's all I'm gonna say because I don't know if it's gonna work or not. And I'm probably, like how I'm gonna go about it is I'm probably gonna just work on the project behind the scenes. And if it has favorable results, then I'll start documenting it, you know, for YouTube. But if it doesn't, I don't wanna embarrass myself already enough that, as I do, <laughs> you know, with a failed project. But I'm telling you, if it works, I'm going to light the internet on fire. It's an interesting project. And you know, me with my crazy exhaust projects, like that one right there, and uh, a lot of other things I've done when it comes to exhaust sound. I kind of have an obsession with chasing exhaust sounds and stuff because, you know, sound is mainly one of the only reasons we really love our combustion engines. Chasing the perfect sound is like, man, if you can nail it, it is like God farting through a tube. It is like the best thing you could possibly hear. Needless to say, if you can make a four cylinder EcoBoost sound glorious, You've done something right. <laughs> so that project is going to be happening. Like I said, I don't know if it will actually work and I don't know if it will actually make it to YouTube, but I just want to throw it out there so it piques your curiosity and teases you just a little bit. But like I said, most of the other stuff we're working on, like now I got the oil cooler, might do that. I'll be a project for a day to try to get oil cooler put on this car. You know, the other problems I need to figure out with the crankcase pressure and Breathe, making the engine breathe better um, and vent all the pressure. That's the next project coming up. We're gonna take the turbo off, we're gonna tap it, we're gonna um, put a gauge to it, check back pressure on the turbo, cause that's cool, um, I'd love to know. Lots of fun stuff coming up. And then eventually we'll get into all the performance crap, like tuning and whatnot, but I need to get the car prepped for that moment. It's gonna take some time. So that's all coming up here in the new year, which is exciting. Ah, it's exhausting. <laughs> exciting, but exhausting. So thank you for bearing with me and all of my craziness. And uh, yeah, I think that is probably gonna wrap it up here for this video. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Share it with everyone you know. If you want to see more content like this and you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Keep a look out for next Cars Creative Video.